Leveraged ETFs. What are they? How do they work? If the S&P 500 stock market index returns 9% inflation adjusted from October 2010 to October 2020, does that mean a two times leveraged ETF returns 18% during the same period? And does that mean a three times leveraged ETF returns 27% during the same period? The short answer is no. In this video, I'll explain exactly how leveraged ETFs work and give you some ideas on how to trade them. What's going on YouTube? My name is Eli. I'm the founder of Tactile Trade. I'm passionate about making quants-based investing available to everybody. So what are leveraged ETFs? Whereas vanilla ETFs track their underlying stock market index and hold their underlying assets like stocks or bonds, Leveraged ETFs use complex derivatives like options, futures, maybe equity swaps to amplify the daily returns of their underlying index, hence leverage. Imagine if a leveraged ETF is an individual and this individual ends up going on a weekend bender with their friends. This individual parties really hard, but they also crash really hard afterwards. In this example, the night out would be a bull market and the morning after would be a recession or a stock market crash. Our vanilla ETF is fine. They only had a few beers, but our leveraged friend, he needs to spend the whole day sleeping it off. Hopefully that analogy made some kind of sense. In this example, let's look at SSO, a popular two times leveraged S&P 500 ETF. But first, be sure to like this video, and if you want to see more quants-based investing content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell. And also, if you'd like to get a kickstart with quants-based investing, head over to my website, tactiletrade.com, and secure your 60-day free trial. If you'd invested $10,000 in SPY and $10,000 in SSO back in 2006, here's what those investments would look like. They're definitely different. I've noticed some people here on YouTube will only show charts of leveraged ETFs when it looks most favorable, notably like from 2010 onward, aka after the financial crisis. But I'm a long-term investor and I like to get the big picture, so I think it's important to consider how this would have performed during the financial crisis. And you can see, if someone had invested in this thing long-term, they actually would have had a pretty difficult time. On July 13th, 2007, SSO closed at 25.04 a share. And on March 9th, 2009, right in the heat of the financial crisis, it made a low of just $3.63 a share. That's an 85% drawdown. And it didn't get back to break even until Christmas Eve 2013. Merry Christmas, you finally got your investment back six years later. It also dropped from a high of 82.86 on February 19th, 2020 to 33.68 on March 23rd, 2020. That's a 59% drawdown. So what gives? Let's look at the summary for SSO, which is the ProShares Ultra S&P 500 ETF. It says here, the ProShares Ultra S&P 500 seeks daily investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to two times the daily performance of the S&P 500. This leveraged ProShares ETF seeks a return that is two times the return of its underlying benchmark for a single day, as measured from one net asset value calculation to the next. So the key word there is single day. So pretty much all leveraged ETFs like SSO work in this way. And because they use complex derivatives like options, futures, and equity swaps, these ETFs or these funds need to rebalance their holdings every day. Because of the daily rebalancing that leveraged ETFs have to undergo, they're only designed, in this case with SSO, to be two times their underlying index for a single day. This means over the long term, they can deviate a lot. So before you jump in thinking you can strike it rich with leveraged ETFs, you need to be aware that there are two risks that exist in leveraged ETFs that do not exist in normal ETFs. The first is pretty easy to understand. These things do tend to have higher management expense ratios or MERs. Granted, this isn't gonna be a huge issue because most people are trading these things, not investing in them, but still, as an example, SSO has an MER of 0.91%, while the expense ratio on the SPY is a mere 0.09%. That means SSO is about 10 times as expensive as the SPY. The second risk that exists with leveraged ETFs is what's called leverage decay. Here's a hypothetical example of a normal ETF and a two times leveraged version of it. On day two, the normal ETF returns 5%. 
On day three, it returns 10%. On day four, it goes down by 10%, and on day five, it goes down by another 5%. So after day five, the normal ETF now has a net asset value of 98.75. However, the two times leverage version has a net asset value of only 95.04. This is the result of amplifying the daily returns, particularly when there's a loss. And this is leverage decay. Usually, leverage decay is not a huge issue, especially in a bull market. But during those times when disaster strikes, like a recession or a stock market crash, it can be very devastating for these leveraged ETFs. And it can wipe out the gains they've made fast. So what are some tips for trading leveraged ETFs? Well, I hope that it goes without saying that they need to be a sort of tactical investment where you move in and out of them. There needs to be some kind of active management. And I sure hope it goes without saying that if you are holding a leveraged ETF, you should be monitoring your position daily. If you're a swing trader and you trade broad market ETFs and you want to add a little bit of leverage by swapping them out for a leveraged ETF, then that's fine. However, if you invest in ETFs long term and you're considering swapping some ETFs for leveraged ETFs, I strongly recommend that you backtest some rules that can help you avoid volatility or market crashes. Because high volatility and market crashes are where the vast majority of damage happens to leveraged ETFs. One good way to use leverage, in my humble opinion, is to substitute it in my ETF rotation strategy, which I call Smart Beta Rotation. So Smart Beta Rotation really is an asset class rotation strategy, and it rotates between mid-cap stocks, utility stocks, and treasury bonds depending on the current level of market risk. Three levels of market risk, low, medium, and high, correspond to each of the asset classes. And the nice thing about this strategy is it's flexible. You don't have to hold mid-cap stocks during the low-risk period. You could replace them for the S&P 500 ETF or the NASDAQ Triple Q, or in this case, you could replace it for a leveraged ETF. Since my strategy is rules-based, we can backtest it all the way to 2007, and we can see what happens when we swap out the mid-cap ETF, IJH, for SSO. And it would have about doubled the performance, although most of that performance would have come from 2017 afterwards. So you can see here, even though swapping out a mid-cap ETF for a leveraged ETF did improve the rate of return, it's not a be-all, end-all approach. There definitely are still wild swings and drawdowns that you otherwise would not experience with a normal ETF. So now you know some of the benefits and, of course, the dangers lurking under the surface with leveraged ETFs. You can definitely make some good coin with leveraged ETFs if you catch a good run. But remember, when you're working with leverage, that coin is always two-sided. Leverage affects the downside just as much as it affects the upside. And with investing in general, downward moves are always more costly than upward moves are beneficial. And leverage just amplifies that, so be sure you understand the risks before jumping in. I hope you found this to be a good introduction to leveraged ETFs. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section down below and I'll answer them as quickly as possible. If you'd like to learn about how I trade and my quants-based approach, and you'd like to follow along in a paper trading account or perhaps a real account, then head over to my website, tactiletrade.com, and secure your 60-day free trial. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And if you do, hit that little notification bell. But that's all for now, so I'll see you next time.